Hello everyone and welcome to this video on compound angles. In this video, we're going to take a bit of a different path by starting out with a question. To answer this question, we'll need to know what compound angles are, so we'll take a look at them and their formulas. After we answer our question, we'll then look at a special case of compound angles, double angles, and answer a question using that. Then we'll wrap it all up. Ok, so let's say we walked into an exam, all fresh faced and ready to take on the world, and we got this question. Find the exact value of cos 75. How would we approach it? We know the exact values of things like 30, 45 and 60, but never 75. Say, isn't 75 equal to 30 plus 45? Maybe we could get some use out of writing cos 75 as cos 30 plus 45. Now if only there was some way that we could take that further. Luckily for you, there is. When we take the sine, cos or tan of the sum or the difference of two angles, we call it a compound angle, and we have special ways of expanding this into the sines, coses and tans we all know and love. Sadly, it's not as easy as sine of a plus b equals sine a plus sine b, that's a big no-no. Sine, cos and tan each have two formulas or identities each, and it's pretty important that you know them, so let's take a look. First up, we have sine. The sine of the sum of angles a and b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. The sine of the difference of angles is sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. Now this may look tricky, but there's a few patterns that we can use to try and remember them. We can see that in both formulas, the sine of one angle is paired with the cos of the other, and then it repeats, just for the different angles. Also, the sine stays the same, so the sine of a plus b has a plus in it, and the sine of a minus b has a minus in it. Next up is cos. The cos of the sum of the angles a and b is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. The cos of the difference is cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So you can see in this case, the coses and the sines stick together. But the tricky thing to watch out for is that the sine swaps. So cos a plus b has a minus in it, and cos a minus b has a plus in it. Finally we have tan. For the sum of the angles, it's equal to tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tan a tan b. And for the difference, it equals tan a minus tan b all over 1 plus tan a tan b. Again, these two are pretty similar. The only difference being, if we're summing the two angles, we get a plus on the top and a minus on the bottom, and vice versa for the difference. I really recommend you learn all six of those off by heart, even if you get a formula sheet, because they will save you a lot of time in an exam. So let's jump back to our question from the start. If we write cos 75 as the cos of 30 plus 45, then we can expand this using our formula for the cosine of the sum of two angles, and we get cos 75 equals cos 30 plus 45, which equals cos 30 cos 45 minus sine 30 sine 45. And we know each of these exact values, so we can just sub these in, and we get root 3 on 2 times 1 on root 2 minus 1 on 2 times 1 on root 2, which simplifies out to root 3 minus 1 over 2 root 2, or root 2 outside of root 3 minus 1 all over 4 if you rationalize. And that's it! Done! You can see how useful these things are in the context of finding the sines, cosines and tan lengths of obscure looking angles. Try your best to remember them, they're super useful. They're also not too hard to remember. Once you remember the basic framework, the only thing you really have to worry about is the change of sign, which I've denoted here by the plus minus signs, so hopefully that'll help you out a bit. Now we can look further into this. Instead of looking at the sine of the sum of angles a and b, what if we looked at a plus a? Or basically, what if we just doubled our angle? You know, the type of stuff you think about on a Saturday night when Netflix isn't working. No? Just me? Hmm. We get these identities called double angle formulas, by making b equal to a in each of the formulas that we looked at before, which have the sums of two angles. So, if we look at the sine of 2a, which is just the sine of a plus a, using our compound angle formula you can see that we get 2 sine a cos a. If we look at the cos of 2a, which is just the cos of a plus a, using the compound angle formula again, you can see that we get cos squared a minus sine squared a. And if we look at the tan of 2a, which is just the tan of a plus a, you can see that we get 2 tan a all over 1 minus tan squared a. Now that's all well and good, but there's an important subtlety that we have to take notice of, and it's to do with our cos formula. We have cos 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a, but we also know that sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to 1, so we can write our formula for cos 2a in two further different ways. 
If we sub in that sine squared a is equal to 1 minus cos squared a, we get cos 2a is equal to 2 cos squared a minus 1. And if we sub in cos squared a is equal to 1 minus sine squared a, we get that cos 2a is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Now this is pretty annoying, but it's really important for integrating sine squared x and cos squared x. So it's important that you remember that cos 2a can be written in these three different ways. Now you might be thinking, oh, Ian, mate, how many formulas do you want? But it's not absolutely essential that you remember the final double angle formulas, because remember, you can just get them from our compound angle formulas like we did before. Having said that, knowing them off by heart can be pretty useful sometimes, particularly in questions where it might ask you to simplify something with double angles to singles. Let's see what I mean with this question. Simplify sine 2x all over 1 plus cos 2x. Okay, so since we have double angles in the question, let's expand these out using our double angle formulas that we found for sine and cos. So we get sine 2x all over 1 plus cos 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x all over 1 plus cos squared x minus sine squared x. Now we remember the facts that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. So we can say 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cos squared x. So if we sub that into the bottom line, we get 2 cos squared x. So altogether, we have 2 sine x cos x over 2 cos squared x, which simplifies to sine x over cos x, which equals tan x. So we found sine 2x over 1 plus cos 2x equals tan x. And we're done. Yes, things got a little bit complicated when we had to use the formulas, but all in all, you can see how useful these things can be. So those are all the things you need to know about compound and double angles. For our summary, let's put up all of the formulas that I've talked about. First the compound angles for sine, cos, and tan, and now the double angles. Also here are a few other tips for answering questions. If you're doing questions where you're trying to find an exact value of a weird looking angle, we want to try and write that angle using sums and differences of 30, 45, and 60, because we definitely know their exact values. And secondly, if you see a compound angle or a double angle, it's generally a good idea to expand that out and ride the magical journey that it takes you on. So that's it for this video, guys. Catch you next time.